Welcome back to the betting show. We got game two of each semifinal series tonight. I'm Calvin. That's Debbie. We're going to break down the betting angles. Debbie is on a heater right now. I was not. Let's just say that. Seven o'clock Eastern Chicago versus Connecticut and nine o'clock Phoenix versus Las Vegas. Let's break down the lines. After Chicago's thrilling double overtime win, the line between the sun and the sky has not changed. The Sun are favored by seven and a half points. Debbie, where are you going with this one? Okay, guys, so we're going to go from double overtime to double ice bath. This game is going to be brutal. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be physical. Why I've liked Chicago all season long is because they can score from all five positions. They've got great depth. Candace Parker, obviously an X factor for them. There's a physical mindset about the way Chicago plays. However, Connecticut is going to cut off the head of the snake tonight. Courtney Vandersloot is going to find some trouble being able to handle the pressure. I think they're going to raise their level on the offensive end as well. So I like seven and a half. I like Connecticut with the points. And uh, I think Breon January and Jasmine Thomas are going to have to pass the ball tonight. And they're going to have to pass it inside to Brianna Jones and to John Quell Jones. Let the Jones sisters go to work and let them get to the free throw line. Well, Debbie, it's funny that you flipped on this game because you had me finally sold on the sky. <laughs> I, well, I wasn't quite sold on this new playoff version after the first two games, but after seeing him do it against the top team in the league, I am in. I'm taking Sky plus seven and a half. You know, one thing that they've done really well in the playoffs, I think, is shot selection. They've been getting to the rim a lot more. They've cut down on some of those long, inefficient jumpers as an analytics guy. Obviously, that's a big thing that I'm looking at. And also, like you said, they're just moving the ball so well. They're playing so well offensively. They actually have a little margin of, for error. They didn't rebound great in that first game. They really didn't protect the ball particularly well. They, they had a lot more turnovers than the Sun. And they still came out with a win against a team that hadn't lost since July in, in games that counted. So they're playing with a margin for error right now, and they're playing, you know, much different basketball. So I'm taking the Sky in the points plus 7.5. The Sun and the Sky obliterated the over in the last game, and this game has moved up to 155.5. Calvin, you going over or under? Well, the last game made me look really wrong in that one, but I'm taking the under again. This line has moved up by three points. We've talked about this a lot in the regular season with all the back-to-backs they scheduled with, with COVID this year. The second leg was always lower scoring than the first. Tired legs, defensive familiarity with the scouting report. This is basically just a back-to-back is what it is, just in the playoffs. I'm taking the under again for the same reason. And you heard Rebecca Lobo say it on the broadcast, kind of jokingly, but she said this second game is going to be played maybe in the 140s because it's just going to be so much of a slow or pace, especially with the double overtime game and with the Sky now playing their fourth game in essentially a week, you're going to see a lot of tired legs, a lot slower pace. Even if shots go in, I still think this is falling short of 155.5. Well, I'm taking the over. I think it is going to be played a little bit slower, but I think because both teams have shown the ability to get to the free throw line, they're both excellent free throw shooting teams. I like their ability to be able to score at the line and be more efficient in executing in their situational offense. Both teams Teams can do a better job on their out-of-bounds plays and their ability to score off free throws, off made free throws. So I like the efficiency and the productivity. I think Chicago can get five or six players in double figures every night. I am taking the over. Las Vegas comes into game two against the Phoenix Mercury as six and a half point favorites. Calvin, who you got? Well, I actually think this line is pretty good. You know, I'm not sure if I would put any money on this line, but in terms of a pick, I am going to stick with Vegas. This is the same line as the other game, and they were half a point short of it. We talked about this off air. Mercury would have fouled one more time. They would have gotten there. You know, we talked about Debbie and I both agreed. Las Vegas' backcourt was going to be the key, and they did. They showed up big. Kelsey Plum had a big-time game, and I'm expecting that again in game two from Kelsey, from Chelsea, and from the whole backcourt, Raquana Williams as well. So I'm taking Las Vegas minus 6.5. Yeah, Calvin, I like Vegas minus 6.5 for the same reasons. I think the backcourt is just too impressive between Chelsea Gray, Raquana Williams, Kelsey Plum, Jackie Young has played her role really well this year, and then we haven't even mentioned Asia Wilson. And Liz Cambage coming off the bench gives him a different look in spurts, you know, where she can can defend Brittany Griner straight up one-on-one, which changed the spacing on the floor. I, I like Vegas being able to run them out of the gym tonight. The over-under for game two of Aces Mercury is set at 170.5. Debbie. 
taking over or the under? Come on, guys. It's like a broken record, right? I mean, I have so much confidence in the skill set of both of these teams and their guard play. Diana Trossi's not going to shoot the ball poorly like she did the other night. She'll get to the line a little bit more. I think she's, you know, understands the, the need to win one and split on the road. The pace of play, the exciting guard play. I'm going over. Well, it might it might sound stupid to take an aces under, but that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the aces under, under 170.5. We already talked about the back-to-back unders whole thing, but also Debbie brought up a good point earlier about how the aces were able to defend Brittany Griner one-on-one, and that really allowed them to stay home on shooters. Phoenix didn't actually shoot that well, even though this obliterated the total in the first game. It was mostly based on that pace. Phoenix didn't shoot very well from three because Las Vegas was able to stay home on those shooters. I expect that to happen again. Diana Taurasi, she, like you said, she could go off at any moment. I still think that the way that the Aces are able to defend them with one-on-one in the post, I don't expect a big shooting game from Phoenix. And I actually think Phoenix is going to end up in the 70s in this one. So I'm taking the under. All right, that's going to do it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at Her Hoop Stats or follow along on Twitter or all the social media.